Methotrexate is very commonly used in the clinical practice, although not as much as steroids, but it's still very commonly used. The mechanism of action is mainly anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory effects. It causes the anti-inflammatory effect by increasing the intracellular purine and adenosine. It achieves the immunomodulatory effect by interfering with the T-cells and the cytokines production. It reduces the migration of T-cells into the skin or into the inflammatory area, and it decreases the production of tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-12. If used at a higher concentration, it can also be used as an anti-metabolite for cancer treatment. Because at high enough dose, it actually inhibits the folic acid synthesis. Diseases that can benefit from methotrexate include atopic dermatitis, pityriasis, chronic spontaneous urticaria, bullous pemphigoid and pemphigus vulgaris, lucian planus, and cutaneous lupus erythematus. Keep in mind that the patient taking this medication has to be at least 3 years of age. We see the results fairly quickly. Most patients will benefit and start showing progress in about 6 to 8 weeks. And the maximum benefit can be seen in at least 5 months. So after consistently taking the medication for 5 months, the patient progress will reach a plateau. About 25% of patients don't respond to methotrexate or at least don't have a satisfactory outcome. The contraindications are very important, especially for exams. The most infamous and very important contraindication is of course pregnancy. In fact, methotrexate is actually used to cause miscarriage in patients where we want to cause miscarriage. It is known to directly affect the growing fetus and cause stillbirth. And so, before prescribing methotrexate, adequate contraception should be advised. It is also contraindicated in breastfeeding, although the evidence are not very strong. But it is thought that small amount of methotrexate can escape into the milk, causing harmful effects in the baby. So generally, as a precautionary approach, it is considered contraindicated. If a patient is already pancytopenic or anemic, you should not give them methotrexate, because naturally this medication can cause myelosuppression, so it will exacerbate whatever problem the patient has with their bone marrow. It is also known as a hepatotoxic drug, so it should not be taken with alcohol, and it should not be taken in any patient where you suspect that the liver function is not alright. And it can also disturb the lining of the GI tract, causing mouth ulcers. And finally, it is also known to cause pulmonary fibrosis, especially in high doses or extended usage. The myelosuppression, if developed, can be reversed with leucovarin. Before prescribing methotrexate, you should order the following for your patients. A complete blood count, or a CBC, renal function test, as well as liver function test, hemoglobin A1c, lipid panel, and serology. Some doctors also add chest x-ray to have a baseline of the patient's chest. So if later on the patient develops pulmonary fibrosis, we have something to compare to. Dehydration can affect the levels of methotrexate by causing it to be more concentrated in the blood. So patients who are severely dehydrated will have more effects of methotrexate. So, while taking methotrexate, it is very important that the patient is adequately hydrated. Drugs interaction includes any medication that interferes with folate. So medications like sulfonamide and trimethoprime are of course contraindicated, because this will exacerbate the folate inhibition and might cause myelosuppression. Use the link below to get access to the full dermatology course. This includes more than 60 lectures with study notes and revision cards.
You will also get access to the flashcards and MCQs. Thank you for watching.